What's going on guys? So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about my Leica M11 monochrome. And this one has been a video that I question myself if I should make it because I was one of the photographers that never saw a point about a monochrome sensor. But everything changed when a friend of mine told me, you have to try this camera. And that was last year, I got to shoot with a Leica M10 monochrome. And to be honest with you, I didn't have high hopes on that camera. I thought it was going to be kind of like shooting in color, but everything is in black and white. But to be honest with you, I got to shoot with a camera for about a week. And when I have to return that camera, I got pretty, pretty sad. And at that time, I knew that I was gonna be getting a Leica monochrome myself. So in this video, we're gonna talk about my experience shooting with a Leica M11 monochrome, as well as owning an M11 color. We're also gonna be talking about how I expose for monochrome. We're gonna talk about some of the specs about this camera. And last but not least, we're gonna be editing a file in Lightroom together from this Leica M11 monochrome because you're not gonna have color channels and the workflow, in my opinion, is a little bit different than when I edit color images. So if you've been wondering why in this world monochrome cameras exist or you've been eyeing the M11 monochrome, this video is for you, so stick around. All right, so before we continue, we're gonna cover some quick specs. And if you have seen my video about the Leica M11 color, you can check it right over here. But I'm just gonna rehearse some of the things that you should know. First of all, the sensor that you're gonna find in this Leica M11 monochrome is gonna be exactly the same sensor as the color version, the M11. The only difference is that this sensor is not gonna have a Bayer filter. Now the Bayer filter is going to cut down light and this is the way it is in every single color camera. And because we don't have it in this camera, this camera is pretty much a night vision machine. Now let's talk about ISO performance. The Leica M11 color has a base ISO of 64, whereas this one has a base ISO of 125. And it goes all the way up to 200,000 ISO. And you may think 200,000 ISO, completely useless. Yes, I would never actually push the camera to 200,000 ISO, but you can actually take a look at this image that I've taken in complete darkness, yes, it has some grain, but look at this. Can you actually accomplish the same image quality with a regular color camera? So this camera is gonna be very impressive when it comes to lower light situations and perhaps maybe one of the reasons why you may wanna pick up this camera. I actually don't think it twice to, you know, dial my ISO all the way to 50,000 because even a 50,000 ISO, something that I would never push a color sensor up to. In this camera, the image quality is actually very, very pleasing. And as you can see right here, even the noise, you know, is pretty fine. Again, we have 60 megapixel. So when it comes to ISO performance, this camera is going to obliterate pretty much any camera out there that I have shot with. Now, when it comes to the operation ergonomics and the body of this camera, it's gonna be identical to the Leica M11 in color. Now, the only different thing that you're gonna notice is that we don't have the red Leica logo in here. And to be honest with you, that is actually a plus for me because I like to be as concealed as possible. And you know that thieves recognize that red dot. So now having a red dot kind of like makes me feel a little bit better when walking on the streets of Miami. So yes, pretty much the dials are gonna be in the same place as you can see them right now. You're gonna have an ISO dial on the left. You're gonna have your shutter speed on the right, shutter release on off, and you're gonna have a pretty simplistic and familiar interface on the back of the camera that we have seen in some of the recent Leica cameras. I was kind of like one of those photographers that saw no point in a monochrome sensor camera because every time I wanted a black and white image, I actually accomplished it with my color sensor. So I went in Lightroom, click black and white, and my image was turned in black and white automatically. If the image didn't look good, I would always have the backup in color. But my approach to black and white was more of an accidental thing or a test that if the image would actually look good in black and white, I would post it. But the whole composition of the image and the thought process was always in color. When I approach my monochrome photography or black and white photography, I try to look for areas of contrast, highlights, shadow, and create a separation. So I really like my images to be very poppy. And when it comes to black and white photography, I have no fear to blow out the sky or underexpose other areas if that's gonna give me you know, good, rich contrast. Something that I would try to stay away when it comes to uh, color photography or I'll be more careful. Now black and white photography is beautiful, but the main thing that made me pull the trigger in buying this camera was the following. The insane amount of details that you get from the sensor. The insane amount of dynamic range, the low noise, 
and the incredible low light performance of this camera. There's no camera that I own that actually comes even close to the amount of low light performance that this camera has. And in my opinion, it is also safe to say that between the Leica M11 color and the Leica M11 monochrome, the amount of light that you can capture with a monochrome is twice as much with half of the noise than the Leica M11 in color. Now, loving black and white photography and taking a black and white photo here and there, I don't think that's gonna be an enough reason for a lot of people to chill out $9,500 for this monochrome cameras because this one is more expensive than monochrome color. I don't know why, but it is more expensive. Now, I bought this one used, so I paid a lot less than that, but still, it was pretty expensive investment. Now, what sealed the deal for me was when I took a trip to the Leica store, I went with my other M11 color and I had my SD card. They had a monochrome there for testing and I was taking a couple of pictures there at the store when I came home, reviewed those images, and I was pretty much blown away with the image quality. Now, for what I recall about my Leica M10, uh, the one that I borrowed for a week to this one, the M11 takes it a notch higher in terms of image quality and how much you can push that ISO. It is safe to say that between the M11 color and the M11 monochrome, this camera captures or gathers twice the amount of light as the Leica M11 monochrome. And again, I'm not being scientific, just visually what I think. And also half of the noise. Now in this part of the video, I wanna share a couple of tips about exposing with the Leica M11 monochrome. And the one metering mode that I use almost 98% of the time is going to be the highlight weighted mode. Now this mode is kind of like highlight priority in other cameras. Basically it's going to protect the highlights. Highlights are gonna be properly exposed and everything else is gonna be underexposed. But this is actually okay with the M11 monochrome sensor because this sensor can actually retain so much information in the shadows. Like I showed you, you know, before you can just recover five stops, no problem. But it doesn't do as well in the highlights. For that reason alone, you know, I recommend that you use highlight weighted mode. Now, if you need to overexpose your highlights, um, there's two things that I do. Number one thing is use the exposure compensation. And I do that by configuring this dial right here just to be my exposure compensation. But this dial also can become other functions. And I have it also configured to be my manual ISO control. So if I push in this dial, now I am going to invoke the uh, manual ISO control. So with one dial, I can control my exposure compensation and my ISO. Now, the other method that I use sometimes, and usually when I'm taking portraits or the subject is you know, backlit, I may use center weighted mode. And center weighted mode is gonna take a reading of the center of the screen. So if I'm pointing my camera at a person and the sky is super bright, well, I wanna be properly exposed for my subject and disregard the background, you know, let it overexpose. Now, when it comes to lower light situation, that's when I take control of my shutter speed just to make sure that I can freeze the action, but I still, you know, leave my eyes so automatic. All right, so in this part of the video, we're gonna be editing a raw file from the Leica M11 monochrome and show you a couple of the things that we've been talking in this video. The main thing that you can see right now is that we have an image that may look okay for a lot of people, but one of the things that catches my eye is the grass. The grass is pretty underexposed for my taste. But that is okay because the metering mode that I used for this photo was the highlight weighted mode. And once again, it's going to protect the brightest part of the picture, in this case, being the sky. But the first thing that we're gonna be doing is I wanna show you guys a little bit of the detail in the shadows. And as you can see, this image is pretty dark. But if I actually slide the shadow slider five stops towards the right, look at the amount of detail that I can recover and look at the amount of almost no noise that we have in this image. Let me actually zoom in so you guys can see. This is now and this is the before. Now and before. So I can actually recover even further than five stop and for that I would have to actually use the curves if I do something like that. And take a look at that even recovering this high, I don't know, maybe I'm a seven, eight stop of recoverability in the shadows. I can see a lot of information here. And again, the noise level is still super, super low. And we're pretty much at pixel level right here. And let me actually show you close up. YouTube probably is gonna allow you to see the noise even better like this, but almost no noise whatsoever. So when editing an image like this one, the first thing is I prioritize what I wanna work first. In this case, one of the things that I wanna make sure that I capture is the details in the sky, even though we don't see a lot of details right now. The grass needs to be mitigated, in my opinion, right away. So that's one of the first things that I'm gonna be doing. I am going to be lifting a little bit of the shadows, like so. I'm probably gonna recover about three stops. 
and that's gonna be fine for now. I tend to go all over the place, do things and undo, so bear with me. Now, the next thing that I would do in this situation, I would see how much I can push the sky. So I'm gonna push the exposure towards the, the right, right? As you can see, we still have a lot of room to continue to push those whites, probably like so. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the highlights to try to bring a little bit of those highlights and before we clip and also a little bit of the whites, but we clip there. So we're gonna back off a little bit. Now, as you can see, this image looks pretty good. This is the before, the after, but I like my images to be puncher. And for them, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna to come to the presence module where we can control the texture, the clarity, and the dehaze. Now, when it comes to the texture, that's something that I use very sparingly, and uh, I run through some scenarios right now. The clarity, sometimes I add clarity or decrease clarity. And it's something that I do at DM because the first thing that I like to work with is going to be the dehaze. And the dehaze is something that is going to add more saturation and contrast at the same time, but it's gonna bring all those details that we're looking for. So one of the things that I know that I wanna do is I wanna mask the sky, so I am gonna select the sky mask, it's gonna mask it for me, blend in a little bit into the wood, but that's fine, we can correct it later. Straight down to the dehaze. And as we're dehazing, we're also bringing that vignetting artifact, but in this case, it doesn't bother me. I wouldn't correct that, to be honest with you. Let me bring a little bit of the clarity as well. That's fine for me. And we're gonna accept this. Now, I'm gonna actually use the same mask and I'm gonna duplicate it and invert it because I wanna work in reverse right now, but without affecting this guy. And we're gonna go to duplicate, invert mask. Let's actually go back here to the exposure. Do I need to expose a little bit more? Probably. Now, do I wanna bring a little more contrast? And probably as well, we're gonna bring a little bit more contrast. And what I like to do sometimes, try this, I increase contrast and sometimes I decrease contrast and bring more of the DH. Show you that in just a moment. Now, highlights, what happens if I increase the highlights? Probably lower them a little bit. Shadows, am I fine with the shadows? Yes, I can recover you know, as much as I want, but I don't wanna overdo this, so we're gonna leave it probably like so. Now, when it comes to the whites, uh, do I want an image to be a little bit more uh, punchier in the whites? And the answer is going to be yes. Now, I'm gonna come all the way to the DH slider, and this is where I am going to be cranking this guy a little bit more. I don't mind cra uh, crashing the blacks or the highlights. In this situation, this is happening, but it's something that we can remedy because what I'm gonna end up doing at the end is I'm gonna uh, end up bringing the whole exposure overall. Now remember, I'm working on this mask right here, which is pretty much the foreground and the background is this guy. So I am going to accept these changes so I can now work on the overall image. Now, anything we do is gonna be applied everywhere. And what I wanna do right now in this situation, I wanna bring the exposure a little bit less and maybe increase the highlights a little bit more. Another thing that I may do from time to time is play with a midtone curve, and if I do that, then what I do is I may actually lower the highlight and the, uh, and the whites and even bring the exposure down a little bit more, and as you can see, we have mitigated that clipping that was happening in there. Now, last but not least, some of the things that I would do, I would actually play with the presence, and after I apply a lot of filters, sometimes I go back somewhat neutral with that texture, Clarity, a lot of the time, if I want more of a vintage look and that blooming effect, I would actually decrease the clarity. But in this situation, I think I'm gonna leave it there because it also helps me with a contrast in the house and the dehaze. Do I bring it now or eliminate it? I'm probably gonna eliminate it a little bit. So as you guys can see, the Leica M11 Monochrome produces an incredible image quality and you can recover tons of information from the shadows, making this camera almost a night vision camera. And the $1 million question is going to be, who is the Leica M11 for and would I recommend this camera? And of course, you know, this one is gonna be a camera for those that love black and white photography, but it's gonna be for those black and white photographers that love to edit images. Because I find that all the images coming out of these cameras are pretty flat, and the reason is because this camera stores so much information in the shadows that, you know, as a result, you get kind of like a flat image that you have to recover in post. Now, the next thing is that this camera costs $9,500, and you are gonna have to find a good excuse to spend $9,500 in a camera, I think it's actually ridiculous, but it is the only camera of its nature that can actually give you the image quality and the results that you get from the Leica M11 Monochrome. For me, I enjoy the camera, so I invested in this camera and probably it's gonna be the last you know, monochrome camera that I buy. It is the camera that I also carry you know, 
pretty often with me. So, you know, I don't mind shooting black and white for weeks straight with this camera. So I find good use, but this is going to be the end of this video. I hope you had enjoyed it. If you want more content about any of the M11 cameras, even the monochrome, drop your comments down below. And also if you have some experience with this camera, I would love to know what you think until then I'll see you in the next video.